Hello, I'm Tom Long. Welcome to Island Meditations. This week, we're at the beautiful South Harbor Village Marina in Southport, North Carolina, a beautiful little town. And I'm going to be sharing with you what I think is the most important verse for someone who is a Christ follower. So if you put yourself in that category, have you thought about that question? What is the most important verse? What's your go-to verse? I'm going to share my thoughts on that today as we enjoy the scenery around this beautiful harbor. Years ago, for the first time, I heard Scott Lair of Southbridge Fellowship in Raleigh, North Carolina, refer to church and church people as messy. It is such a great description, isn't it? Ideally, when we converted to following Jesus, all our wounds would heal, not even leaving a scar. All our shortcomings and failures would be fixed, and we would be perfect little saints who never did anything wrong. But instead, the church is made up of people like me, people on a journey. Any one of us could write a book like John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress about our own lives. And because the church is messy, made up of people who, like myself, have hurts, weaknesses, and blind spots, the church as an institution has done a lot of awful things. Denominations have been formed to whitewash the evils of slavery, racism, sexism, and homophobia. Denominations have covered up their histories of sexual assaults, not only of women, but also of children. I think it's a fair question to ask, why would I even want to be a part of the church? What good is it? But I also think the people most likely to ask that question are people who are food and shelter secure, people who aren't worried about domestic violence, people who aren't facing some addiction, people who aren't in a third world country where the opportunities for education, job training, and healthcare exist only because churches generously provide them. In that sense, not much has changed since the days when Jesus walked the earth. The Pharisees asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. The church is messy, but I don't know of any other movement that has made so positive an impact on those neighbors who have the greatest needs. That is why even though the church is messy, I love her and want to be a part of her. So my nomination for the most important verse for the Christ follower is Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In the Gospel of Mark, just after the third time Jesus predicted that he would suffer and die for us, James and John came to him with a request. They wanted to be seated to Jesus' right and left when Jesus was, as they put it, in his glory. That didn't sit so well with the other ten disciples. <laughs> Jesus reminded them all of how the occupying Romans and their collaborators used their power to subjugate people and exalt themselves. Jesus said that in his kingdom, things were different. And our verse was part of his lesson. Let's back up a couple of verses. Not so with you, Jesus said. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. In the world, the top dog lords their power over others. If that is your idea of leadership, you're just not getting what Jesus is telling his disciples. We're not here to weaponize the church so that we can have worldly power. Two of Jesus' favorite disciples fell for that lie. Plenty of Christian leaders, even today, continue to sell out their integrity for a taste of political power and social influence. <laughs> yep, the church is still messy, but 
Jesus challenges us as he challenged the disciples then. Let's do something a new way. Let's not be self-serving. Last week, I shared the most important verses for a new believer. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That is both our motive for service and our guide to understanding what the Bible teaches. But they are commands that demand action on our part, not just warm feelings. My mentor, Joe Gluck, told the story of a pastor who preached a sermon on loving God and our neighbor. That week, as he was sitting in the church study, he was admiring the new, freshly poured concrete sidewalk leading up to the church building. But he was appalled to see a boy walking home from school who took a stick and began writing his name in the concrete. The pastor ran out of the building, grabbing a broom by the door. He chased after the boy, waving the broom and shouting. Just then a parishioner happened by. My pastor, didn't you just preach that we were supposed to love our neighbor? (laughs) Yes, said the pastor, but I was speaking in the abstract and he was in the concrete. If we truly want to be Christ followers, we need to find a way to move from love in the abstract to love in the concrete, love in action. The Christian life is a life of service. To paraphrase Robert Schuller, the secret of service is to find a need and fill it, to find a hurt and heal it, to find somebody with a problem and offer to help solve it. Boy, is it easy to lose sight of what we're supposed to be about. Jesus chided the religious leaders of his day saying, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Service and sacrifice are the big deal, the camel in the kingdom scheme of things but we often get sidetracked by the little gnats. In this admonition, Jesus tells them that what is important is justice, mercy, and faithfulness. We serve others when we work for equal justice for all, not just people like ourselves or people in our own country. We serve others when we show mercy to those in need. We serve others when we are trustworthy and can be counted on to help. We serve God by humbly trusting God and faithfully walking with God. And that walk, that walk is a life of service. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Thank you for sharing this time with me today. I hope that you found it beneficial. And I would be interested in knowing what is your go-to verse? How, what, what verse do you, you use to remind yourself every day uh, not to strain at gnats and swallow a camel, but keep your eye on the most important matters as a follower of Christ? May God bless us in the week ahead and make us blessings for others as we seek to serve him by serving our neighbor. God bless you. Have a great week. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay.